Bună ziua, domnilor și domnilor, am revenit cu uh, următoarea prezentare. Uh, îl avem alături de noi. And I'm going to switch in English because this presentation is going to be in English. Um, so we have uh, the great honor to, to have uh, with us uh, Mr. John Armenakas, uh, Director, Cloud Partner Practice uh, from uh, Partner Development and Success from Colt Technology Services, and Mr. Theo Galea, Country Manager, Cold Technology Services. Um, they will prepare for us, for the CIOs and for the IT professionals, um, a very interesting and catchy presentations uh, titled Accelerating Time to Value for Digital Transformation Initiatives with a Cloud-like Networking Experience. John, we are in a little bit late, so I'm passing to you directly the floor. Fantastic. Thank you, Hugo. Um, appreciate the, the warm introduction. Before we kick into the substance of my presentation, um, I'll let my, my colleague Teo um, start off with a few words. Thank you, John. Uh, bună ziua tuturor și bine ați venit uh, din partea Cold Technologies. Mă bucur să văd că suntem astăzi prezenți într-un număr atât uh, de mare. Uh, am să revin în engleză, acum I'll switch to English for the benefit of, of everybody. My name is Theo Galea, uh, country manager for, for Romania, and I'm really pleased to introduce to you this highly relevant uh, briefing uh, session. Uh, digitizing the enterprise, or as it's more commonly known, digital transformation, enables enterprises to gain competitive advantage, improve time to market and ensure their offerings are the best in class. In effect, is digital transformation that is at the very heart of business transformation and enterprise cloudification is very much the enabler. Um, uh, So, as the evolution from Cloud 1.0 to Cloud 2.0 gathers momentum with more and more mission critical application and workloads migrating to Cloud, what role does connectivity play in enabling successful migration to Cloud? What are the connectivity challenges that IT decision makers need to be aware uh, of and address in order to accelerate the migration to the cloud, uh, um, to the adoption of cloud. This is in essence, um, this is the essence of the insights that we aim to share with you all today. And in the process also share with you how adopting a cloud-like uh, networking experience can accelerate the all important time to value metric underpinning Uh, business transformation initiatives and which can enable business to optimize the benefits of cloud. On that note, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, John, who heads up Cold Partners Practice with our partner development and success operation. Floor is yours, John. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Teo. So a very warm welcome, everybody here today. And thanks for really investing some of your valuable time to better understand some of the challenges associated with business-led digital transformations and their direct success correlation with connectivity. I'd like to start off by sharing here the names and logos of some of the biggest and most well-known company brands on the planet. I'm sure you all know them. These are the top 20 global companies that have achieved the highest impact business transformations over the past decade from amongst all of the firms in the S&P 500 and the Global 2000. When arriving at this top 20 list, two of the lenses through which these companies were screened included new growth, how successful has the company been at creating new products, services, new markets, and new business models? Secondly, repositioning the core. How effectively has the company adapted its traditional core business To, challenge, uh, to changes or disruptions in its markets, giving its legacy business new life. In other words, to make this prestigious top 20 list, each of these companies you see on the slide demonstrated how successfully they developed new growth businesses outside their traditional core, which have become a significant share of their overall businesses. This in and of itself should resonate strongly with each and every one of you here today 
responsible also for enabling and facilitating the business-led digital transformations of your own respective organizations. So today, more than ever before, digital continues to accelerate and is changing our world on a regular basis. But what does this mean for business? What does this mean for the world's workforce? And what can executives over the next few years expect? The Global Center for Digital Business Transformation predicts that four in 10 industry incumbents will be displaced by digital disruption over the next five years. Are you one of those so-called industry incumbents? In such a climate, do you have an actionable plan on how you will ensure that you are always adapting, innovating, and anticipating the next market transition? We've established already that businesses are, and if they are not, should be using more and more cloud services and applications inspired by the flexibility and agility on offer. However, it's not just collaboration and communication cloud services. Today, as you all know, it's much more about mission critical applications being migrated. And it is this evolution towards cloudifying mission critical applications and workloads that is making connectivity more critical than ever. So more and more, you will see networking services providers such as Colt partnering with the major hyperscalers and other key players in the cloud migrations ecosystem, such as SIs and managed service providers to offer their combined capabilities, tools, agility and flexibility in order to accelerate enterprise workload and application cloud deployments, and in turn, accelerate time to value. In fact, this direct success correlation is stronger today than ever before, and will only continue to strengthen as business-led digital transformations are underpinned more and more by the migration of mission-critical workloads to cloud, such as, for instance, SAP or Oracle IT stacks, which really represent a, a significant proportion of the world's mission critical applications and workloads. We also know from experience and from validated research that any enterprise customer's journey to the cloud is characterized by how well the following challenges are met. Risks, the risks associated with operational disruptions and data security breaches, operational complexities, complexities that relate to redesigning and rebuilding applications and processes that need to operate hybrid and multi-cloud environments, <coughs> excuse me. And thirdly, migration costs. Costs which if not optimized can dilute the ROI and either delay or even delay the project. <coughs> excuse me. So let's therefore start to take a look through a more focused lens at what the key components are that make up a best in class network architecture to underpin successful digital transformations. The foundations upon which any network services provider must be able to build and deliver their cloud migrations connectivity propositions is the network footprint and reach, as well as how ready and robust it is to be able to handle the dynamics associated with cloud deployments. By way of example, at the forefront of Colt's cloud migrations capabilities is the depth and breadth of our owned end-to-end -end network footprint and its key technology characteristics. So when assessing how fit for purpose a network services provider is for enabling your enterprise cloud deployment, look out initially for the following. Depth and breadth, is the network owned by the network provider? Is the network at a minimum 100 gig and fully SDN enabled, meaning can it support the most demanding bandwidth hungry cloud migration and consumption requirements? And is it underpinned by a software defined orchestration layer or intelligence, if you will, that can deliver a near real time cloud like networking experience? We'll refer to this in a little more detail a little bit later. More specifically for today's audience and the locations of the companies that you represent, you need to also be asking the question of your network services providers, what does your network footprint look like in my backyard? And what is your investment strategy for growing your network assets and reach? 
Here we provide you with a high level snapshot of the intelligent network footprint and reach that we have cult have invested in for Central and Eastern Europe as a direct extension of our already vast global network. So we've discussed the importance of depth and breadth uh, and the key technical characteristics such as SDN of your network services provider and what they need to be able to deliver from their network footprint. But what about the number of interconnections to cloud on-ramps? What sort of cloud on-ramp interconnect density can they offer to support you and your growth in the all important multi-cloud requirements of enterprises? SAP's applications and workloads, for instance, are fine-tuned to be hosted on any of the major hyperscaler platforms, whilst Oracle applications and workloads are typically optimized for Oracle's own OCI regions. To this end, this is another reason why the quality of the partnerships your network services providers have with the cloud service providers must be symbiotic and one of the highest level. Challenge your cloud connectivity provider to demonstrate the richness and maturity of their relationships with the cloud service providers. Can your network services provider truly deliver a best in class on demand and SD-WAN based cloud connectivity capabilities combined with a market leading cloud interconnected network footprint? Ultimately, this ensures that your network services provider is able to support you regardless of which hyperscaler platform or platforms you choose to move your on-premise applications to in order to underpin your digital transformation. So having addressed the questions of network reach and capabilities, let's move on to the top characteristics, I guess, for want of a better term, that CIOs are demanding of their network services providers as they relate to cloud connectivity. The public internet is no longer fit for purpose when it comes to cloud connectivity, at least when it comes to supporting the more demanding expectations associated with mission critical workloads and applications. So if you are responsible for delivering a successful business led digital transformation initiative for your company, you must ensure that your chosen network services provider can deliver to the highest levels on security, latency, throughput, and reliability. Indeed, they should all be measurable, monitorable, and included in an end-to-end -end service level agreement that your network services provider is bound to contractually. Any compromise on any of these connectivity requirements and your digital transformation total uh, time to value and ROI objectives are also compromised, not to mention the risk profile to your business also increases. So we've now covered some of the key selection criteria CIOs need to apply when assessing network service providers to support their digitally led business transformations. Criteria such as depth and breadth of network footprint, ability to handle large volumes of data flows, interconnects to cloud on-ramps, latency security, et cetera, et cetera. However, Despite a network services provider meeting all of those criteria, what capabilities do they have to address the very real challenges that come with variable data flows during a cloud migration project? In our extensive experience, supporting many digital transformations underpinned by major cloud migrations, we typically see significant data flow variability depending on the stages of the cloud migration. So it stands to reason that the network supporting these cloud migrations must also be dynamic or elastic in its capabilities. This is where the discussion pivots towards automation, intelligence, and the very real need for the cloud connectivity supporting your digital transformation to be delivered as a cloud-like networking experience. So you need to ask your chosen network services provider or SI, or managed services provider, do they bring to the table the automated abilities required to rapidly stand up secure, highly performant connectivity for workload and application migrations? Colts on-demand cloud connectivity experience 
is an example of one of the very few such options available today in the cloud connectivity space that is genuinely fit for purpose. As a visionary, an early investor in the software defined enablement of its own global network over five years ago now, what Colt have done is fundamentally position itself favorably to deliver on the very necessary requirements that underpin successful enterprise cloud deployments. So let's deep dive a little more into the what's in it for me question, I'm sure is on all of your minds by highlighting some of the key features and benefits of software defined networking capabilities for cloud connectivity. The features, the features and benefits that can truly deliver tangible benefits for cloud led business transformations. Firstly, rapid, highly performant connectivity for an on-premise customer to any cloud platform that can be provisioned in minutes, not days, weeks, or months. Secondly, pay only for the bandwidth used ensures customers do not pay for bandwidth over-provisioning throughout the cloud migrations lifecycle. And thirdly, near real-time bandwidth flexing up and down ensures that there are no delays in the bandwidth required to maximize cloud consumption during and after the migration phase. Fourthly, coverage. Has your network services provider seriously invested in interconnecting their network footprint assets to all of the major hyperscaler POPs? And are they committed to continuing to do so? Last but not least, can they deliver all of these automated network orchestration capabilities via a rich, simple to navigate portal-based user interface? So without a shadow of a doubt, adopting anything less than a cloud-like networking experience for your business-led digital transformation adds the potential for delays in, to in time to value, increased risk, and adverse impacts to your ROI goals. <clears throat> so I've shared with you the benefits of software-defined or cloud-like networking experiences as they relate to the phase of migrating to the cloud. Now allow me to briefly discuss the importance of software-defined networking to the phase of adoption of cloud, which is another KPI that relates directly to return on investment. I mentioned earlier that when businesses transition applications like SAP for HANA or Oracle to the cloud, they take advantage of new technologies at twice or more the rate of their competitors. Therefore, end user application performance impacts on your WANs, your wide area networks must be assessed and are paramount to the planning and implementation phases. Legacy or traditional wide area networks are not fine tuned and or optimized towards cloud platforms, which in effect make them more of a hindrance than an enabler of a successful cloud deployment. Legacy wide area networks can in fact have negative implications on end user application performance, which in turn impact negatively on cloud adoption and ROI. So you must make sure that when planning for a business led digital transformation program, that not only are you planning early for the cloud connectivity to support your migration to the cloud, but are also planning early for the impacts on your current WAN infrastructure in order to ensure a superior cloud adoption experience. So to recap, we've established the position that business led digital transformations are very much underpinned by the migration of mission critical applications and workloads to cloud. Secondly, we've addressed some of the key challenges associated with cloud migrations and established that there is a direct success correlation between connectivity and enterprise cloud deployments. Thirdly, we've established that not all cloud connectivity propositions are equal and that there are some fundamental selection criteria that need to be applied to ensure a best-in-class solution is implemented. Fourth, depth and breadth of network footprint, density of cloud on-ramp interconnects, the ability to dynamically handle large volumes of bi-directional data, uh, cloud data, and the likes of latency, throughput, security, and reliability are all, un all underpinned by an end-to-end -end service level agreement 
are the minimum standards that CIOs and IT leaders must take into account. Fifthly, however, the evolution from cloud 1.0 to 2.0 has by necessity been a game changer as well for cloud connectivity, meaning that for time to value to be accelerated, risk to be reduced, and return on investment to be optimized, your network services provider chosen to support your business-led digital transformation must also be able to deliver a cloud-like networking experience. On that note, I thank you for your time today. I wish you all the best for the remainder of this forum and of course, on your digital transformation journeys. John, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Absolutely brilliant. All the CIOs that uh, you know uh, are dealing with the uh, mission critical in cloud, uh, we have, we all know you know the the all the problems with uh, latencies and uh, you know all the connections uh, issues uh, that might occur. And the uh, software defined networks are always a um, uh, uh, taken in consideration uh, by 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 us. But let me ask you just a very quick question: Is five G technology an enabler or would complement, for instance, the SD-WAN technologies in order to solve these kind of latencies and connectivity issues in the future? Yeah, I think I think in the future where you're going to see where you're going to see 5G really step up, and the next whatever 6G, 7G after that, I think is where you start to get into the world of um, edge computing. So you know, right now we're moving from one extreme, which has been the world of on-premise applications. We're moving very quickly to cloud um, deployed applications. And somewhere in between, you're gonna see many applications that are really demanding of, of an edge computing environment. And I think that's where 5G is really gonna come into its own. John, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, ladies you, and gentlemen, we'll be back in, in about one minute or 30 seconds. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all.